Hi guys, Donny Dipshit here. Let's see what those assholes if they know what they're talking about. I got one of these hammermms, hammermms. It's a hammermms. Hem, hem, hems, hem. Not too many fucking hems here. I don't know what the fuck. Well, well, maybe those assholes know what they're talking about, but we'll find out. It's a Donny Dipshit review. The hammermms. Yeah. Yeah, it smells like a beer. It's, it's, I, I smell beer. It smells like a beer. Let's see what it tastes like. Yeah, it tastes like a beer. You know what? I think those guys kind of knew what they were talking about. Ham! It's pretty fucking good! So give it a shot. It's hams. Drink these fucking hams! Drink that fucking hams! And welcome to Beer Critic, motherfucker! trying a rare limited edition Budweiser 1933 the Beer Reserve Amber Lager. Now, as everyone knows, the dark time in American history, Prohibition. Supposedly this, this recipe was created by Adolphus Bush before Prohibition, and then Prohibition came along and they said, you can't make beer. Fuck. So they put the recipe away. Well, in 1933, when Prohibition was repealed, they made a batch or two and shipped it around St. Louis, that little area. Well, it's a pretty big, big area, but still. Then they put the recipe back in the vault. Well, in October of 2017, they brought her back out. And for a limited time, you can try this. So, that's what we're going to do. It has a 6.4 alcohol by volume. 6.1. Or 6.1. An amber lager, limited edition. So... We're going to get a taste of history tonight. This is inspired by the 1933 recipe. So, supposedly an Anheuser-Busch recipe from before it was the mark of the beast. There you go. So, and of course it comes in these cool little bottles, these old school looking bottles, which I like. We had to have the bottles for the collection, if nothing else. Oh, yeah. It's a good color, too. That's nice gold label, old school looking Budweiser label. 1932 Repeal Reserve Amber Locker.
Let's talk about prohibition for, for a moment here. Nothing like the government stepping in in the name of let's. That's what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. In the name of let's let's dictate the morals of the country. Did it work? <laughs> no. Fuck no. Are they still doing it today? Absolutely. Yep, prohibition was the dumbest law put on the books. It was a constitutional amendment. Not just a law. Well, you know what I mean, though. It yeah. was the dumbest legislation enacted, however you might say it, okay. up until somewhere in between the uh, 1984 Firearms Act and the war on drugs. Yeah. <sighs> All Prohibition did was cause the rise of you know, low-level hoodlums like Al Capone and people like that to get power and notoriety. And then the media did exactly what they're still doing today and took these outlaws, these honestly horrible people. But because they were going against whatever the media was going against at the time, they got romanticized. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One of the great downfalls of this country is going to be our media. Absolutely. <sighs> and the government sticking their nose where it don't fucking belong. That's every government everywhere. Mm. Mm. Definitely has an Anheuser Busch smell. Oh it? yeah, it definitely has an Anheuser Busch smell, but it smells good though. It has almost a floral scent to it, like almost kind of flowery. It's probably the hops, but I would imagine. Well, I'll bet you it's a lighter roasted barley. I would probably imagine. I'm betting that smell is a lighter roasted barley, or not lighter, darker roasted barley. Well, Budweiser's. Known for using rice instead of barley, so maybe they actually True use enough. barley. So. Well, let's let's give her a find out. Let's take a dive in history to the repeal of prohibition. You can definitely taste the um, heightened alcohol. Yeah, you can definitely taste the heightened alcohol, and you can definitely taste the Anheuser-Busch. Yeah. It does have that um, Anheuser-Busch bitterness to it. That took my damn breath away. <laughs> I mean, damn. But it's not bad, I mean. Speak for yourself. Yeah. Definitely a darker roast. It almost um, kind of reminds me of a light ale. A lighter ale. Roll your tongue around inside your mouth for a second. You getting a weird oily film too? It's a little bit, yeah. That weird oily film seems to be holding that bitter taste that usually goes away pretty quick. Yeah, it definitely, definitely has a, a, a lingering aftertaste. <laughs> My mouth literally feels like it's coated with canola oil. <laughs> Shit. It's not good. I mean, it's a pretty color and everything. It's a good looking beer. I was hoping for great things, and I'm sure in 1933 this beer tasted a hell of a lot different than it does right now, because this tastes just like fucking Budweiser. That, uh, American Lager, or whatever the fuck it was a couple of years ago they put out. Yeah, the, um... That was supposed to be like the ultra-premium Budweiser, that's what this tastes like. 
That left the same weird oily film too. Yeah. That shit tasted like earwax. Mm. That's what this shit tastes like. A little bit, yeah. Mmm. It's not so bad that I won't drink it or anything, but if this goes back in the vaults and they don't release it again, I won't be disappointed. I mean, he says it's not terrible. You'll still drink it. Me, on the other hand, I took three gulps out of this mug, which by the third gulp it should start tasting good. If it doesn't, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> this is bad enough. I'm quite literally sitting here staring at the bathroom door, waiting to get the fucking mouthwash and into a good beer. <laughs> <laughs> That bad, huh? Yes, that bad. Good God. I don't think it's that bad. I mean, it's... It's not great. I've never tried a Marzan beer. I've heard saw some reviews of this and they said it tasted like a Marzan beer. So I don't no, know. it does not. <laughs> I like Marzan beers. This, wow. This is, yeah, this is definitely not one you want to sit down and drink a six-pack. No. Is. Everybody knows Anheuser Busch buys a beer, and they take and bastardize the uh, recipe and put out their own version of whatever that beer is. And it always takes on that weird Anheuser Busch kind of flavor, like they just take the normal recipe and add in one ingredient after it's brewed. Mm. This tastes like it's pure whatever the fuck that weird off Anheuser Busch flavor is. <laughs> it definitely, Budweiser always has a, just a sharp sharpness to its flavor. I don't know what, it just it's definitely a Budweiser. It's. Well, they got one word on here, right? What's that? Sharp. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, this... Very hopeful with this one because... I was too. I had high hopes for this one, guys. <sighs> A, we both generally like older school beers, not, you know, this old, but still, we both, you know, the hams, the PBR, the, yeah. you know, old style, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. This is just like every other Anheuser-Busch product, just with extra alcohol in it. Yeah. It's... And extra bitter in it. It's quite literally like they took whatever they put in every product they make, some sort of fucking syrup or something, <laughs> that gives it a weird, bitter, you know it's an Anheuser-Busch product flavor. This yeah. tastes like it's that syrup with extra liquor added to it and carbonated. <laughs> kind of does. <sighs> Honestly, I had higher hopes than... What I'm getting here, I, mean, I thought this was. I figured this would be something just awesome. Like this is. I was gonna come in here and say, you know, this is this is what Budweiser should be. You know, this is what they need to just make this regular Budweiser. You know? That's what I was hoping for as well. And I'm, it's just not there. You know. No, this is this bad. It, it's not great. It's definitely anticlimactic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Still worth the buy just to have the bottles and the six pack for the collection, though. No. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> the old school artwork and old school bottle is cool. Yeah. But as far as the product in it, I mean, I could take it or leave it. I mean, it's. Well, I'll, def I'll definitely finish off this six pack. But as far as. Oh, I. Oh, I hope they don't take, don't, you know, 
I hope this isn't limited. I hope they just keep it forever and I can go out and get it whenever I want. And I've had it once. I probably wouldn't buy it again. The difference between he and I is he's sitting here saying he'll finish off the six-pack. I'm sitting here going, who's coming over to the house in the next couple of weeks that I could pawn those other four off on? <laughs> because he's going to drink the rest of that mug sitting in front of him. And this is bad enough. I am not ashamed in any way, shape, or form to say that much of that beer is going down the drain. It's no. <laughs> I have matured enough at this point in my life that I'm not pouring the rot guttiest nasty shit I can find because it's cheap into a beer bong to get drunk. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm... I want to drink and enjoy it. I enjoy that little enough that it's going down the fucking drain. Well, like I said, I'll probably work my way through that six pack. It's not going to be one of those. You're not, you know. I I think I want a beer. I'll go grab one of those Budweisers. Cause now, cause we have hams in the fridge, so I'll go grab a hams and PBR and PBR. I'll grab one of those too. So, yeah, we were commenting how kind of sad it was that right now our refrigerator is three types of, of uh, food in little containers. The entire door is full of condiments. Milk, apple juice, and 60 beers. And Kool-Aid. <laughs> yeah, and Kool-Aid. Kool -Aid. Gotta have the Kool-Aid. More than half of our refrigerator is beer at this point. <laughs> we do it for you guys. We destroy our livers and Destroy our health for you guys. Shit, speak for yourself. I can't die. That is true. That's why we're the Superman hit. We decided when I was in the hospital after my wreck, I was either Superman or a zombie. And Superman's way easier to explain. Why not? Because I don't want to fucking eat you. Mm. Mm. However, on that same token, wouldn't Jesus technically have been a zombie? Yes. He rose from the dead. Technically is a zombie. I wonder if he hungered for brains. So that's the part that they took out of the Bible. That's probably hidden in the Vatican somewhere. Anyway, along with the prob probably the actual recipe that the Dolphus Bush created, because I don't this think this it. is it. Either that or this has Mr. Bush's original recipe for like. One barrel of the 150 they mix together to make this. The rest of them are the same cheap as fuck ingredients that Budweiser uses for everything. Could be. Mm. In my opinion, that's one of Anheuser Busch's biggest follies as far as their beer goes. Even if their recipes were good, you cannot scour the entire fucking globe not giving a rat's ass for quality control just to buy the cheapest uh, product uh, you know, possible to brew beer and still uh, get a good product. Uh, you can't do it. Uh, Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it, it lingers. It, um, that taste lingers. My mouth still is coated with some sort of fire. <laughs> it's driving me up a wall. There could be a reason why they only did a short run in 1933. Maybe they, since Prohibition was repealed, they wanted to release a high alcohol beer. 
just to get, just to rub it in the nose of the government, which I could see. That's applaudable. But there could have been a reason why they um, did a short run and then went back to, I guess, what we might know today as Budweiser. Because this one's a little much. However, the alcohol content would not account for the fact that my mouth is covered in fucking canola oil right now. I don't think it's canola oil. I don't, I don't know. It does have kind of an oily taste, but I don't know. I don't know what it would be. I don't think it would be canola oil. It's not. It doesn't taste like canola oil or vegetable oil or anything like that. But all of us has, you know, gotten a egg roll or something that was fried that yeah. was still full of oil that just coated the whole inside. Of you. That's what this feels like. Uh, yeah. Well, Budweiser 1933 Repeal Reserve and the Lager. I wouldn't suggest it. Nor would I, and honestly, this could be one of those cases of expectations killing reality. It could be, yeah, absolutely. Um... Honestly, what I think this is, is a slightly darker roasted, slightly longer fermented, regular Budweiser. Yeah. They got the color just a little darker, they got the alcohol just a little higher, and they said, hey, that's close enough, and put it in bottles that say it's the 1933 recipe. Yeah, I could, I could see that, because... They do seem to kind of cheat that way. Yeah. If you like original Budweiser, not Bud Light, but original Budweiser, and however think it could be a little heavier flavored, this is probably going to be the shit for you. Yeah, I mean, if you like a heavier flavored Budweiser, I mean, give it a shot. But I've never been a Budweiser fan. This didn't change my mind. Me either. I mean, if your taste palette is fucked up bad enough to enjoy what I have to assume is roughly the asshole of a dying zebra, <laughs> <laughs> more power to you. God. My taste hasn't been fucked up that bad yet. Well, I guess this will cut her short now and say... I guess any closing remarks? Don't waste your money. Especially since this is a special edition, this was actually more expensive than regular Budweiser, so it was far more expensive than Hams. Yeah. My Miller hands. Light, PBR. There are so many other beers that are so much better than this for a lot of the time less money, but equal money as well. So yeah. just don't waste your time. <laughs> and don't drink and drive. Yeah, if you're dumb enough to drink and drive. You're probably dumb enough to buy this. Yeah. So, good night. Mm -hmm.